Bow. What's up, everybody? It's Brand Man Sean, and I'm back with episode three of Ask Brand Man, where I answer questions that you guys ask in the comments section below or somewhere else on the channel, but make them most below. And don't forget, the golden rule, the quality of your answers is dictated by the quality of the questions you ask, so make sure you ask some thoughtful questions. Not good questions, right? Thoughtful questions, right? So we can be specific and go into detail wherever you need. Business, music, however you want to get it. We, I can answer them. It's the network. I want to go ahead and hop into question number one. Oh, my bad. I forgot to let you guys know. Again, I'm trying to drop these every single Wednesday. So be on the lookout for these on um, these episodes on Wednesday. So question numero uno. I, I'm Player Tone. I mess these names up a lot. But, uh... I'm Play a Tone said, I bought a feature from a rapper. He said he would promote it, Ruchi. But if he don't know how, I'm assuming it's don't know how, can I promote it so it does get out there? Yes, 100%. This is your track, all right? You can promote your track. You have the license too. However, when it comes to collaborations, there are quite a few politics, to be honest, that you do have to consider. So I'm going to try to run through a few scenarios because I've been through these with uh with artists in the, in the background where you know i remember one artist he he was signed to asylum he got a um a, a track from this guy that was popping in, in in new york and the dude is is big he was telling me yo grand man this dude is gonna take off i'm telling you bro he, he's, he's getting hot i want to get on this song we'll go great together but the problem what happened was they said they were going to promote it. They said they were going to be in the music video. All these things. And artist is popping now. Um, hey, he, he told me. He was right. But a lot of people heard the song and actually thought that his verse was better. Right? The, the artist that I'm talking about who's assigned to Asylum than the guy who was already popping. And what happens is ego a lot of times. Right? So all of a sudden, artist wasn't ex excited to, pr to promote it. You'll hear this through the manager a lot of times, but a lot of times you got to understand the manager is really speaking based on the artist fit, how, how the artist feels. So in those scenarios, if they feel showed up, they might not be able to put that out there. Right? It's a, it's a, it becomes an entire thing. So now is what happens. I paid the money. These people said they were going to do that. Now they're not promoting. Oh, they, they went from I'm going to put this on my feed to I'm going to put it on my story and it's not going to be permanent. Or they went from, hey, I'll put some ad budget around or I'll do a music video. But now all of a sudden I'm super busy. I had this actually happen on multiple occasions where the artists don't show up for the music video and it never happens. But it's politics. So you, can, you, you have to manage it. Right. And what that looks like is in some scenarios, you got to put that thing out yourself that I'm always for that. Right. At least put that thing out yourself because you put your you put your money up for it, you pay for a feature. I'm not going to let this be a sunk cost just because you don't want to put something behind it. And you can you can you can play up the fact that that other artist is in there as much as possible. Maybe even do a cartoon video or do something um, unique and experimental in, in the music video to make it seem like there's a reason that that other artist is in there. You can get into all type of crea uh, creative concepts, um, which I've seen done to to manage how another artist might feel. But to protect yourself from that, number one is have a contract. I've seen people straight up violate the contracts. Um, but number one, at least have a very clear contract that y'all can reference and, and, and stick to. And in situations where they're they're violating that, you honestly have to play the politic game um, where you got to get a feel for it. You put pressure on them and say, hey, hey, when this happened, when this happened, when this happened. But it's, if it's not happening, depending on where they are in the game and certain things, there are moments where artists, you know, you either sue, right? Or you kind of say, I'm going to take this short-term L to keep moving long-term and, and keep hustling. And maybe they got to acknowledge me in the future, right? And maybe they feel bad. They say, I'm actually popping now. And they say, yo, that'll give me two or three songs for free. Who knows? Um, but it's, it's, it, become, it can become a weird situation. And while we're talking about collabs, um, make sure, if you can, the best scenario is honestly to work with artists on your level. Look at people who are similar on Spotify, not some big artist, because it's going to become a thing where they have that leverage over you. And unless the relationship is right uh, there and it's strong, 
you're probably not going to get what you want out of it in the first place, just to be honest. So work with somebody on your level where y'all can trade audiences, share audience, and create a moment for people together, all right? And it'll benefit both of you guys because, you, trust me, you will see, all right, the most benefit from those scenarios, the most engagement and and um, and uh, commitment on both sides, right? So make sure you do that and look to do that more than finding a big artist and, and paying for that. But yeah, if you got a song, um, I'm Play a Tone, promote that thing promote that thing all right next we got reach trees what's up man haven't talked to you in for in a while um he said for smaller artists is it worth hyping up each single track all right um re track release with a full 21 day plan or whatever your time scale is or pick good ones to hype up with a 21 day promo that way in between big heavily promoted singles they're singles that you spend a fraction of the energy on in terms of marketing but release still to keep feeding the fans. So I, 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 I get a sense of what you're, what you're going um, at. So let's say this. The answer that you always have to consider is number one, guess the word. I don't know if, you're gonna, if you have an idea what I'm going to write, so guess. Actually, I wrote it wrong. Mm. Re-sources. I don't care how big, small you are, everybody has to face the fact that there's still a limitation of resources at some point. And what you have to decide is where do you want to focus your energy on? All right. If you only have a certain amount of money, you can have a whole bunch of ones, right? I got, let's just say these are 10 ones. At some point, what if this one goes up 2x? What do you have? You have two. But if I just have two tracks, right? And then I distribute five, five tick marks within those two tracks, five uh, elements of energy within those two. If one of those doubles, all right, that five goes to 10. So that's what you have to think about when you're distributing your energy, because at the end of the day, you only have a finite and you need to get an ROI. So just putting that energy everywhere to get no real results, not even give it a chance. You have to take a risk at some point, especially when your resources are limited and you're just starting out. It doesn't make sense to be on, try to be on every single platform and post every day on every platform or to, to, to push every single song with the same amount of money or the certain amount of posts and all that stuff. Doesn't make sense. So whatever your 20 weight one day plan is, I don't know what you're referring to there. Um, whatever that is, don't do it for every single song, right? Apply it to the right songs. And what I look at is, all right, you're pushing a song, right? That song's going up. At some point, that song might mellow out a little bit, right? And this is when you can start to say, well, maybe I, I, I release the next tra uh, another track, all right? So now you try to get another boost. That's one way to approach it. Or you can just say, I'm going to post, post weekly. I'm going to post uh bi-weekly monthly however you want to do it in that case but let's say we're following this path the thing that you want to do is say all right after this post happens and then after the next post happens and i start to get enough data which one is, is worth continuing to push more than anything else but even within that i got my focus tracks these should continue to get 80% 80 of my energy, right? Whenever I'm doing focus tracks, and if I'm releasing that much music though, and I still wanna to try to give a little blip, then you have that final 20, right? And there's four tracks within that maybe, all right? So you have, let's just say five elements. If we're working with money, you can divide by five, uh, you can divide that 20%. So let's just say money actually. $5, work with a Facebook ad. You will put $5 towards your four tracks and then you have two other tracks, so that's six tracks in total that you're get you're splitting that eighty dollars that's left with. So that's forty dollars for these two tracks, and then you got five dollars giving a little blip of energy to to the to the next tracks. And we're just talking strictly Facebook ads for now. You can apply that in energy towards whatever your you know your post, your uh, Spotify playlisting, however you want want to approach it. But think about it like this: so what tracks are you all are you going to put in at eighty percent? And this eighty percent should probably be two times a month. If you're, if you're going super high clip and you're, and you're dropping like all the time, right? But at least, right, give two weeks to these two tracks, at least, all right? Um, and then even if you aren't dropping tracks frequently, but it's a money limitation, 
again, 20% of your resources, whatever that looks like, goes towards these additional tracks. All right? That's a starting point. That's just a starting point, but I want to try to get as specific as I can with the question because, of course, I don't know everything going on with, with you reach trees, but most people can operate off of that 80-20, right? You have a priority, um, you know, <laughs> deprioritized, right? And these could be one, this could be one track in this section where it's all 80 and everything else I don't really believe in as much because what I would do is 80 test, 80 test, keep that other 20, right? Find something else based on how this perform. Keep testing within the 80, the songs that I believe in most. And then when something responds in this 80% where it's performing better, then all of these other tracks, they drop to the 20 and I'm putting 80 towards one, one track, all right? And I might kick out some of the, the ones that were in 20 before, so now they get no action at all, all right? I hope that makes sense. Maybe I'll do a separate video trying to make it even clearer, but I think it was decent enough. Um, next, we got Tamara Williams. She said, "Ask Brand Man, would it be more beneficial for an artist to release the song and music video at the same time, particularly if this is the first time an artist is releasing music? The answer I say is yes. Yes, release both of them at the same time. Um, now, the, the reality though is you still have to answer to whatever your resources are are you advertising it? Like they, there's a lot of people it, where they'll get just some views on their, uh, let's say their Spotify, they're playlisting it, but they don't know about the YouTube video at all, right? And that's not gonna be their behavior. So you still have to put energy towards pushing both of them. If anything, what I would do in that scenario is I would run some YouTube ads for the music video and then run some Facebook ads that is running through an intermediary link you know, smart URL, um, you know, there's a list of them, all right? Out there, toned in is what we use um, at our agency, and they can click through to hear a track, and they can click through to see the video, all right? So they know that they'll, both of those options are, are there, period, all right? And then in the video, you get the commentary if, if people are more likely to click and provide comments if they came over from a Facebook, Instagram. But then on top of that, you still get that top of the funnel awareness from running a YouTube ad. So those that would be what I would do. I would drop both same day. It's not that, it's not, honest, and, and to be real, it's honestly not that big of a deal because nobody does know who you are at this, at this point. Nobody's waiting for one or the other to come out. So to maximize attention, same day, run a Facebook ad through intermediary link that shows yes i got a video and then you can listen to spotify apple amazon music however you want to roll and then also put a little money in that uh youtube video to boost those those views as well i will put more money especially when i'm starting off in the facebook instagram ad all right than i would put in the youtube just a little bit right just a little bit to kind of start to pad views hopefully and um, to find an audience that you see responding well when you look at the view time of the video from your placements that you target with. All right, so good question, Tamara. Um, Asil GG, all right, Asil GG. Asil GG says, ask Brandman, so when should artists pay for promotion from third party accounts on Instagram? You can start from day one, honestly. Now, there's been tracks where literally the entire campaign was just Instagram post and it went viral. And when I say track, there's been tracks, I'm not even talking about theoretically, but tracks that we've ran campaigns. Like I'm thinking about this one Corey spearheaded where <laughs> the, it was just a few viral posts went crazy, crazy viral posted by celebrities and all this stuff. Million views, all right? Just from Facebook posts, but every, I mean, Instagram posts. But the thing is, every single track doesn't marry the type of virality or have a video associated with what that kid did. Um, so the reality for most people is, is this. You start here and then you start to give it attention through something consistent and controllable, which Nine times out of 10, what is that going to be? Ads, all right? So this portion right here is all ads. And once you start to see that there's feedback, 
positive feedback from the ads. You're finding a good click-through rate. You're seeing real engagement where people are saying they're rocking with the song and a little bit of transferability over to a Spotify or something like that. The next step then becomes, how can I make this consistent boost? Hopefully there's some organic, especially, you know, there's some organic already being, um, already happening from the ads, not just direct, then that's great. But the next step now becomes, how can I start to make it take off virally? And from that point, you want to look at posting on third party Instagram accounts, maybe some other influencer activations that make sense for your song, right? So you have the controlled, right? The ads, the sustainable, right? All that's that, that, that initial. And then you get into the viral where you're playing the odds. There's been a million, a million brilliant videos that have been done at this point that still haven't necessarily went super viral, right? You have that one video might do well, but nobody else copies it. Nobody else posts it, um, posts it somewhere else, All right? So it's always going to be a gamble. You can have five pages posted, but you don't know if it's still going to go viral from those five pages, but it still can help pad. So I wouldn't look in most cases doing it at the beginning, but to even merit if it's worth doing because those other pages can be expensive and to just spend two hundred dollars or even seventy five dollars right just on one and not get any results when you don't even know if people like the song when you can find out if people like the song within five ten twenty dollars do the ad thing first right or whatever you can do right for, that you have control over and then start to look to, to pad it in different ways creative ways we're not we're not going to get into um you know what you can do on third party accounts and viral campaigns here but you can you can do it immediately most people nines out of ten they need to do some of this first all right i mean let's just have access to somebody and it's easy for you to go ahead and start with them all right and the last thing i'll, I'll add on to that is um you can actually Nah, nah, nah. We'll save that for a whole nother episode. It's going to end up being a whole nother video. So let's go ahead and skip to the comment of the day. Yay. That is zero. <sighs> Lee Looch 22. I'm I mean, killing these names. Um, zero Lee Leach 22 says the greatest common denominator I've noticed in each video that's watching a lot of my videos in particular is understanding the concept of context. Context for when you are on your music journey is the most important aspect to understand. There are many routes to take on your music journey, but every one of those paths involve, un, is, um, involves understanding your role in music. So I'm gonna answer her or add on to this very, very quickly, all right? One, two, three, four, five. There's levels to this right here, right? Everybody has to understand that there's levels to this. And sometimes you might watch a video that I wrote, uh, did. And you're like, yo, brand man, you're not talking about nothing. I don't quite get this. This ain't clicking. Well, I might be talking to this guy right here right now. And you're right here, right? Or you might be like, yo, I already know this. This is basic. Well, maybe I'm talking to this guy right here. So it might not apply to you. So there's certain times that certain advice applies to you. There's something that you might hear when you're at level one, that might take you to level two, right? And then when you get to level four, all of a sudden, that thing you learn at number, level one is clicking again and you're hearing it totally different because now, right, you're in a different place, right? It's like when you listen to a track when you're five years old, then you rewatch, um, re-listen to that track when you're 10 or 20 years old and now it clicks in a whole nother way because you've made progress, you've gained experience. So what most artists get stuck is they're staying on this level. Most of them are at level one or you're staying at whatever level you are. So either advice gets stale because you can't, you don't have a new perspective. You're still at the same point on the hill instead of you climbing a mountain, right? Or for whatever reason, they're, you're backsliding, but that, we're not gonna get into the backsliding. So why is this important in terms of what Zero Looch 22 said? If you don't understand there's there's levels to this thing, you don't you're not taking in the fact that everything that I say on this page, everything that Corey say or whoever we're, we bring out onto this page says on this page requires context. So we might be talking about something we've done and it's applied directly for four artists, but it might not apply to you right now. 
right? It might not work for you. You might be a mysterious artist. This artist might be a, a personality based. This artist might never post on social media. This artist might post on social media every day. And everything has a strategy contextual to what that is. And that's why it's important that you watch these things to get additional frameworks of how to think, right? But at some point you have to sit down and say, where am I right now? What makes sense to apply right now? I can't do what Drake is doing today. I can do what Drake possibly did 10 years ago, maybe, right? Or maybe I need to do what some other artist did. That's how you have to think about it. So one, sit down, figure out where you are and what's gonna get me to the next step, right? I'm on level two. I need to know what gets me on level three. Some people get caught up on all this level five stuff and oh, that sounds cool and, or, you know, level one stuff. No, all I need is the level one. I mean, the, the, the stuff that gets me to level three. So what gets most artists, and honestly, I can say people caught up is you take in information and you're wondering why people are passing you by, right? How this person get here so fast to level four, even though I have all this knowledge and I know more than them and I, I even have a better music than them. Well, what happened was this person came in and said, yo, what's gonna give me a level two? I don't even know nothing else. What's gonna give me level three? I don't even know nothing else. What's gonna give me level four? I don't need to know nothing else. It's nice to know, to feel smart, all that stuff, but you don't need to know it. So context is everything. And also over information is a thing. <laughs> you don't need to know everything. You don't need to watch every single video or every, every single one of these videos, but figure out where you are at that moment. What uh, what does it take to get to that next step? And if you need to talk to somebody who does this, you know, me, uh, many, there's many people out there, right? Who, who do this, find somebody that you can trust and has contextual advice and experience to say, yo, where am I personally? I get all this stuff, but where am I personally? How can I get to my next step? That's it. Had to cut it for a second because before I close this out, I want to make sure you guys also check out episode two where I did something called the $5 feedback challenge. I want you guys to check that challenge out and participate in it. If you don't know what I talk, I'm talking about, go check out the $5 feedback challenge for people to give you quality, unbiased feedback to your music, especially if you need that. Check it out. And other than that, yes, this is episode number three of Ask Brand Man. Looking forward to you guys' questions. Put them in the comment section below because, hey, your question might end up on the next episode. Have a great one. Hit that subscribe button.